This morning we are going to talk about Botox as um, we have one person here who is not a medical doctor or a nurse. So I figured I will talk a little bit in the layman's language. Botox is basically a neurotoxin. William, I'm going to need a... Yeah, that's better. Okay. So what happens is that whenever you, whenever the brain thinks about moving something, for instance, I want my fingers to move up, the cerebral cortex, the motor part of the cerebral cortex, sends signals through the motor nerves that go to the nerve endings where acetylcholine is released. It's a, called a neurotransmitter, acetylcholine. That's the word, which acts at the neuromuscular junction and causes the muscle to contract. That is how we command, say for instance, our finger, finger to move, or if I want to wrinkle my forehead, it, the signal goes through the, through the motor nerve to the muscles of my forehead uh, that I need that muscle move. So what does Botox do? It causes a, a blockage at the neuromuscular junction, and therefore it causes what we call a flaccid paralysis. Flaccid means loose without any tone uh, so it obviously because of this uh, botox is used in the in the cosmetic field so next slide okay so lots of times you may get asked the question what what is the difference between botox this botox is onobotulinum toxin a and this is abo uh, botulinum toxin a so you see this is ABO, ABO, and this is ONO. That is the only difference. It is the same botulinum A toxin. So you can say that they are sisters or you can call them first cousins. They're practically the same thing. The end result is going to be the same. The only difference is that the ratio Botox, one unit, what is one unit of Botox? Nobody knows. Just like we don't know who, who said, okay, this is going to be one centimeter or this is going to be one inch or this is going to be one gallon of liquid. We don't know what, who devised that, but somebody did. So it's an arbitrary figure that the manufacturer of Botox uh, is the largest company is called Allergan. They came up with this unit and people often ask, what is a unit? And I give them exactly the same explanation. It was invented by Botox. We don't know what it is, but it's a very, very small, tiny quantity of Botox. So, when ladies or men for that matter they they walk into the office they are here for a consultation they don't know what the difference is some of the people of course are very knowledgeable but then there are others who do not know the difference between go back one they don't know the difference between what we call dynamic lines dynamic lines are the lines that you produce by action of the muscle for instance these lines Static lines are the ones that are always there. No matter whether you're doing anything or not, they're there. So, Botox only treated, treats dynamic lines, the lines which are produced by the action of the muscle. It does not treat the nasolabial lines. It does not treat the marionette lines. So, these are called static lines, the lines that are always there, versus dynamic lines which are produced by the action of the muscles. So to simplify, there are only three areas which are generally treated with Botox. The forehead, these lines on the forehead, glabella is this, the frown lines. The 11s? Yep, the 11s. And then crow's feet are the lines on the sides of the eyes, right here. And then these static lines, nasolabia forward and marionette, they are done with the uh, dermal fillers. So, I'll be showing you some slides of real pictures, but I simplified it. What is it that you want to really know? What muscles should you be concerned about? It is a two, uh, the frontalis muscle on the forehead, which you see this red arrow, the frontalis pulls up. Pulls what up? The eyebrows. And the orbicularis oculi, the muscle that goes around the eye, the so-called sphincter muscle of the eye, pulls the eyebrow down like this. So there is a tussle between the frontalis and the orbicularis oculi and the resting tone of these two muscles 
keeps the eyebrow where it is. In other words, if you weaken this muscle, the lifter is weakened, the eyebrow is going to drop. You do weaken this muscle, which is the orbicularis oculi, the eyebrow is going to go up. That's why I injected in her right, into in the her eyebrow closer. because we are then going to allow the other muscle which was of equal strength by partially paralyzing this we are allowing the frontalis to lift it up because we weakened it okay so these are two muscles firstly the uh, the frontalis and the orbicularis oculi palpebral is a part of the orbicularis oculi you will see in a minute so don't worry about that so one muscle, orbicularis oculi, frontalis, two muscles. The, these three muscles are in a group. They're called corrugator supercilii. This should be an I, not an L. And then this muscle, the fan-shaped muscle in the, in the middle is called procerus. Nature has put all these three muscles where you cannot use them individually. In other words, you will do this, you're using all three, all three at the same time. So the contraction of this muscle is gonna produce a horizontal line. These corrugators are going to produce the so-called 11s because they pull in this direction. Then just in passing, I, I'm going to mention the orbicularis oris, which is the sphincter muscle of the mouth, and then mentalis muscle here, which in some people they have a dimpled chin. They have a dimple here and dimple here, and they don't like it. And when they do this, of course I have a beard, you don't, the, the two or three dimples appear here and they hate it, those who are clean shaven or ladies for that matter. So mentalis muscle, and then the nasalis muscle, this is what, of course, what cre I've drawn it only on one side. This is what produces what we call the, the bunny nose. All right, so I have broken down the muscle. These are practically the only muscles you need to know because I will show you a drawing next of the, okay. So let's talk about this. No go zone. 2.5 centimeters above the eyebrow, you never ever inject here. Why? Because you inject here on the frontalis, you are going to drop the eyebrow. Why? Because you're weakening the frontalis or the lifter, therefore the orbicularis oculi is going to pull your eyebrow down. So you have to leave at least 2.5 centimeter of the frontalis above the eyebrows to make sure that the eyebrows don't drop. You need at least 2.5 centimeter of the frontalis to keep it where it is, okay? So this is probably the most important thing. Everybody that comes in that's new to Botox asks me the question, Doc, am I gonna get dropped eyebrow? And I explain to them, no, you're never ever gonna do that because I am always gonna leave 2.5. That is the very first thing that I do. Therefore, your eyebrow is not gonna drop, okay? So now when you look at this, things get very, very complicated. You got so many muscles on the face. How are you gonna remember all of their names? And you don't really need to. Okay, but I need to point out to you that the corrugator muscle has at least two parts, actually three parts. You see here, corrugator supercilii. Here's the depressor supercilii. The frontalis muscle is right here. And this is, this part of the corrugator is underneath the frontalis. They have cut this portion out in order to show this deeper layer, okay? This is just to, here's the other part of it. It's coming underneath the frontalis. You see this bulge? And this part is actually corrugated supercilii, which is attaching to the side of the nose. That's why the people can scrunch it in because it's anchored over here. Therefore, it pulls like this, okay? So, this is just in passing. Now, the orbicularis oculi also has three parts. The orbital, which is this outer part, then you have a preceptal, and then you have pretarsal. In other words, this is also, the upper eyelid is, is also part of the orbicularis oculi. And you will see in a minute how you can prevent not only dropping of the eyebrow, but also dropping of the eyelid because that can also happen. And when that happens, it's a big deal because it's gonna take like about six weeks before the person can fully open their eyes and that's serious. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I stress that 2.5 because if you're staying out of the 2.5, you're not gonna have the, these issues. Okay, so, all right. So the corrugator supercilia, you see this muscle, the underneath part of it? 
they've cut this out to show you. But ordinarily, if you look at it without cutting that part, this is what you will see, a bunch, a mound there. So th that's what this is, all right? Orbicularis oculi, again, the two parts of it, the orbital part and the palpebral part, palpebral part being the upper eyelid, all right? So let's go on to the next. All right, so here's the 2.5 centimeter. You never ever inject these blue things or purple or whatever color that is. These are lines. So even if somebody has a line here, right above the eyebrow, you never ever inject it. Because if you do that, the, the, the Botox is gonna seep into the, into the palpebral part and is going to possibly paralyze the eyebrow and possibly the eyelid. That's why the 2.5, okay? Now, a person has, go back one, it's very sensitive, okay, yeah, okay. So uh, let's say a person has lines here. You know, in addition to these three lines that they have on the forehead, they also have lines here. So the question arises, what do you do about this line? Well, very simple. Measure 2.5 and put your Botox there at 2.5. Don't go into that line. Because if that is below 2.5, that's how you're going to drop the eyebrow. The treatment is, Botox is a neurotoxin. It, you're talking about muscles. I have drawn those lines. Nature has drawn those lines because they are the result of the contraction of the muscle. Lines are not what you're treating directly. It is by treating the muscle that you're indirectly treating the lines. Okay, so this is very important because you'll be, oftentimes ladies come, Doc, I want these lines gone. And I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't say anything until I get to the education point. That if I inject that, your eyelid is going to go down. You don't know it, but I should know better. Okay, so, let's see, all right. So, if you have these lines, this yellow thing is, do not inject it. Do not inject it. Even if there is a line right here, do not inject it. Measure your 2.5 and go there. Okay. So the question arises, the lady asked me, how is it going to get rid of this line? It is going to get rid of this line because when you give the injection at 2.5, the Botox diffuses for a distance of one centimeter. It's going to fall into that line anyways, and it's going to get it. But don't inject here because if you inject here, then it's going to diffuse one centimeter down and it's going to get the orbicularis oculi and even the palpebral part of it. That is the only trick. The Botox, the most important thing, this is it. Okay? All right. So some people, as I've drawn over here, their lines, the previous slide showed the lines are only in the middle. Some people have the lines way out here, almost into the hairline, like, if, uh, like forehead like mine. If this line comes way over here, if you don't get the lateral part, here's what happens. The eyebrow goes up in the lateral part if you don't get this part. And you get the Mr. Spock look. You know, the eyebrows are pointed at the end. And unless you're Mr. Spock, you know, you're not going to like it. And then you're going to come back and say, Doc, look what happened to me. That's because whenever somebody has lines way over here, you measure 2.5 and you go out way lateral, almost to the hairline, so that you do not get this Mr. Spock look. Because oftentimes what people will do is that they put the, the five dots here. You will see in the next slide. They put the five dots because usually, okay. So this is the, the dot, okay. So what are these numbers? They're the units of Botox. So you're gonna do two, two, a row of twos and these are the five dots I'm talking about, okay. You measure 2.5 here, you put these dots here. All right. So when you put these dots, as I showed you in the previous example, if the person's lines come way to here, this dot should be way over here. So that you do not get Mr. Spock look. Like if somebody has a line, hey, over here, measure 2.5 from here and put your Botox right there. So you don't get the Mr. Spock look. 
On this paper, basically, I have told you what are the averages of both tasks. Now, question often arises, people come in and they ask me, Doc, those who are in being uh, getting the Botox done, say, for the first or the second time, they say, well, if it's not going to cover everything, why do they sell it in blocks of 20? Because 20 units generally does one area. That is why it's sold in blocks of 20. Okay? In other words, not everybody wants to get all the three areas done. But if you ask me, what is the average amount of Botox that anybody needs for all three areas, the answer is 60. But obviously some people, like this lady that you just saw, she's a very petite, skinny woman. All I did on the forehead was, and she does not have a wide forehead, I put a row of threes, one single row. Because instead of splitting it into two rows, my forehead was so narrow, I measured 2.5 from here, and I put a row of threes. So instead of putting four, in each spot, I just use three. This area she's not bothered with. She didn't get anything done here. So she got this, plus the nasalis bothers her. So I put two and th three and three there because her bunny lines are very, very strong. So um, the nasalis muscle, so here is the nasalis muscle. It's a strip of muscle on the side of the nose. You see this strip of muscle? That's what produces the, the bunny line. So the other muscles that I've mentioned, the eyebrow lift, in general, she got only two. But in general, you need to paralyze the lateral, or partially paralyze the lateral three centimeters of the uh, orbicularis oculi right here. And that will weaken it and allow you to, to do a eyebrow lift. And then for smokers lines, those people that have very fine lines on their upper lip, smokers end up with that, especially the ladies in their 50s and 60s. You can put a row and sometimes you need 10 because they have a line even in the middle. So you put another two there. Now there was one lady who came yesterday and she said, I got these eight units of Botox and look at my lips. I said, ma'am, in order to paralyze your lips, you would need about 200 units of Botox in your lips. We are not paralyzing your lips. Nobody wants to paralyze your lips because we don't want you to prevent you from eating and talking. So she was under the mistaken impression that we are actually paralyzing the lips. No, we are paralyzing just a few superficial fibers which will get rid of the resting tone which is responsible for those fine lines. Big difference, got it? Likewise, on the chin, when somebody has a dimpled chin, you can put two or three, depending on how strong the muscles are. The, the determination of how many units you put there is obviously depends on how thick and how big and how strong the muscles are. So you can use, in general, lots of people come in here and they have bought 20 units of water. They sit up, but that's all we can afford. All right, you want the 20 here, or how would you, because what I do is, generally, when I fill out the sheet, I tell the patient, this is the same thing, but anyways, example, pretend that this is all blank. So I'll say that this is my side. In other words, I'm gonna make my recommendations here. This is your side, and you tell me how you want me to divide it. There are two ways they're gonna to talk to you. One, they might talk money to you. Doc, I can afford $300. That's my upper limit, that's all I can do. So what I will do is, I will divide the $300 by whatever the price of the Botox has been quoted to them, and I will come up with a number. Whatever, okay, so we, instead of 60, you can afford 30 units. All right, so what is your preferred area? What What do you think it bothers you the most? They say, Doc, these crow's feet, I mean these, 11s, that's what bothers me the most. Okay, then we're going to go with 20 here because that is dep the depends on how strong is there is their uh, uh, frown. So I said, okay, I'm going to put 20 here. Now, which is the next thing that bothers you the most? They said, Doc, this don't bother me because I keep the bangs in the front. Nobody sees my forehead anyway. These don't bother me. Well, I'm not going to do that if, if, if that doesn't bother me. Why should I bother? So then they say, okay, these crow's feet bother me. 
So I have used 20 here, I'm left with 10. So I said, okay, I'm gonna put five and five here. That's what I'm gonna do. So on their chart, I write the 20 here, I write nothing here on this side of the, of the chart. I will write uh, 20 here, five and five, total of 30, we are done. The way I talk to the patients and what I tell them is that some of them will say, well, doc, how do we know it's gonna work? I said, this is my recommendation. If I recommend 20 to you over here, because I will look at the strength of your muscles and I will look at the configuration of your forehead and where your lines are. If I recommend 20 and you get 20, it is guaranteed. In other words, if you come back 10 days later and you show me, doc, then do anything, you put 20 there. If I recommended 20 and you got 20, after 20 is my responsibility because that's what I recommended. 20 didn't work. It's like I sell you this TV. The TV doesn't work. I'll give you another TV that works. So if they come back, I will try to analyze where exactly it doesn't work. Okay, so maybe the lateral part of the muscle escaped a little bit. I'll give two here, two here. It's very rare that I have to give them 20 more. Maybe a two here and two here or three here and three here. Or if they, the line in the middle escape, put a two there or a three there and take care of it. And I don't charge them for it. Provided if I recommended 20 and they got 20. Now, if I recommended 20 and they got 10, is their problem. Because I recommended 20, you chose to get 10, that's your problem, okay? You come back and it doesn't work. Now, don't tell me that it was my Botox didn't work. Because mm -hmm. people, some some people didn't. I had a patient also day before yesterday. She says, oh, the Botox worked really good on the forehead. But this is how you look at it. So I go back and look at it. And I had recommended 20, and guess what? She got zero. She didn't get any Botox there. And for some reason, she believed that it was good, or she thought maybe I don't keep any records. And she was gonna tell me that she got what I recommended, but actually it didn't work. So I put the chart under her nose, and I said, ma'am, you got 20 here, but you got zero here. You refused. Now, if you have motion here, sorry, but you have to pay for it because you, I, I, I recommended the 20, you got zero, you didn't want it. And you got 10 and 10 here, so you, you opted for a total of 20. 10 here, five and five, 10 here. That's what you wanted. So this is how uh, I do it. And uh, let's see if there is any, yo, that's the last slide, so thank you.